Welcome to the Alpari World Match Racing Tour, the world's most competitive match racing series. Over the next eight months, skippers from all over the world will be backing it out in the hunt for the ultimate prize, the Alpari World Match Racing Tour Trophy. There will be thrills, spills, disappointment and joy throughout. So hold on to your hats and enjoy the ride. But first, a look back at last year's tour. Trace France. Woo, woo, woo. Bruni wins and takes Everybody. Match Race Germany for a hard fought and well won win. Bjorn Hansen is the new oh, king of woo. the Korea Thanks, Match Cup. Ian Williams takes the second race and the win here in Portugal. Great racing. Superb win. Williams wins Stena Match Cup sweep. Mursky squeezes around Hansen towards the finish. What a race. Mursky takes the title. And that's the second World Tour event in a row. Ian Williams. Monsoon Cup champion, triple world champion. This time the pressure really is off. You can see a proper, proper celebration. Match Race Germany is the first of nine events to be held across the globe during the Alpari World Match Racing Tour 2012. It is set in the town of Langenagen, situated 200 kilometers from Munich on the beautiful Lake Constance. It is here that the 12 teams will be sailing the Bavaria 40 boats as they compete for 50,000 euro prize money. The world's best skippers will be pitted against each other as they go head to head in the classic match racing style. Match racing is the most gladiatorial sailing discipline. It pits two boats against each other on a very short race course. The two teams battle for advantage during a four minute period before the start gun, then sail upwind to the top mark where they hoist spinnakers. Turning back downwind onto the run to the lured mark, the spinnakers must be dropped for the second lap. The races usually last two or sometimes three laps and the action is umpired on the water using a system of flags. Each boat is assigned a color, either blue or yellow, and the sailors raise a red and yellow flag to protest if they think their opponent has broken a rule. The umpires announce their decision, raising the appropriate blue or yellow flag to signify the boat that has offended. If a red flag is raised as well, it means the infringement is more severe and the penalty, turning the boat through three quarters of a circle, must be taken immediately. Otherwise, the penalty can be taken any time before the finish. The first to cross the finish line is the winner. All teams will be competing for the Match Race Germany title, but for the nine tour card holders, this is a chance to get off the mark and bag the first points on the road to the world title. This year's tour card roster sees several of the old guard returning, as well as a host of fresh faces, hoping to impress on the Alpari World Match Racing Tour in 2012. The goal is to take as much more experience as we can and uh, obviously to have uh, fun and uh, a bit of uh, results uh, will, will be nice. This year we hope for a top five at the end of the season. Of course, sure because we are happy to be here and we want to do a good result because we are the only French. 
our aim is just for improvement throughout the year. If we can do that, the results should look after themselves. Hopefully we have some good matches against the older guys and uh, we'll definitely be looking to take a few wins from them. We're going to take it as it comes a little bit, you know, obviously um, we, we want to do well and um, if we can make the top eight and every, every get, I think towards the end we should be uh, making the semis. We just want to make sure we sail best we can. Peter Gilmore of Yanmar Racing is one of the most feared competitors on the Alpari World Match Racing Tour. He is a hugely experienced match racer and is the only skipper to hold four World Match Racing Tour titles. Look, I think uh, our approach to, uh, to the season obviously is to do as well as we possibly can. These World Match Racing Tours are long seasons and uh, you know they put different pressures and different circumstances on different people and it'll be interesting to see how it all unfolds. It's a, a series that literally anybody can win and it's when you get in the right zone and get things going for yourself that it really counts uh, whether you can make it work or not. I think Match Race Germany is an interesting sailing venue. It, it, certainly on the, uh, the weekend days, a lot of spectators get out and uh, really enjoy the, the racing here. The conditions can be extremely challenging with wind shifts coming from all which ways. The uh, uh, wind strength uh, often uh, varies from you know three to, to uh, four knots some days, and uh, you know up to ten to fifteen on other days. And uh, you need to just make the most of the conditions and the circumstances when you're sailing. All I can deal with is what we have to to do, and uh, we're out here to race as as very the best we possibly can, and uh, and see how that uh, pans out for us. This is a great opportunity to get some points on the board for sure. So after day two of Match Race Germany in the qualifying round robin stage, the new Alpari World Match Racing Tour card holder Pierre Antoine Morvan is on top alongside Phil Robertson of Walker Racing, both with seven wins out of eight. Tour veterans Bjorn Hansen and Peter Gilmore are struggling so far, with Hansen all but out after a difficult second day of racing. We join them as they go head to head in a key qualifying match. Both boats okay, looking to try and eke every little yeah. ounce of speed out of their boats. Subtle adjustments in trim. Peter on the helm, assessing the position of that windward boat, looking at the slot, checking the trim of the sails, communicating with his crew. Neither of these two skippers looking to give away an inch in this race. Do you see the focus, looking at the mark, looking at the telltales on the jib, trying to get the best out of the boat, but also just bearing in mind where Peter is there, the glance over to Peter, there he is, he's still behind me, there's the mark, you see the, the speed of process, it's mark, boy, telltales, sails. Actually look, electing to jibe, he looks to jibe straight away, he must be confident that either in the left hand pressure okay. or Hoist. that it's a long starboard run. He jibes and sets, and now it will be Watch Peter's turn to approach the mark. Spinnaker setting on Yamaha Racing, excellent Hold set from Hold both back. boats. Hold We're on there jibing to cover, but now only perhaps half a boat length between these two and it's going to be all on in this race. This race is a long way from over and there you see the rapid movements of the crew of Bjorn Hansen to try and get their boat up to speed, match the sailing of Peter Gilmore, but Peter Gilmore's the guy on the march. He's rolling over the top towards Bjorn Hansen and I think we could see some fireworks towards the bottom of this run. And here we go. <laughs> Peter looking to roll over the top of Bjorn Hansen. Bjorn Hansen needs to respond. Peter Spinnaker is set. They've done a great job with their crew work. I can see Safuku on the bow, holding down the front of that Spinnaker. The main is set. The boat is charging. It is Peter is on a march here as he rolls around the front of Bjorn Hansen. Peter was very close when he initiated uh, that, uh, that turn. And, and now we see both boats back here. We're going to see a very aggressive love from Peter. He jives and his bow is turning up towards Bjorn. Real nip and tuck stuff here. That's a red guy! 
Sen now laughing, I can hear him shouting. Leon doing all he can to respond, and, and for me, it's Peter that is getting the best of this. I can see the flags flying, the spinnaker is flying, Sofuku's on the bow, he's trying to set the spinnaker. Both shoots just ragging in the breeze as the boats track down this, this, this course here on this final lap. It's going to be a race here to see who can set their spinnaker first. I think the umpires have been have been asked for a dis opinion. For me, there hasn't been an infringement, and I think we have actually had one green flag. And beyond there is is he's he's desperately trying to to set his spinnaker. There we go. We can see a blue flag, the blue flag of Peter Gilmore. So that's Peter that is infringed. So Peter has gained the lead, but he's now a penalty down. So this is going to be an interesting scenario. We see both boats struggling to set their shoot. Peter is not going to let Bjorn off here. He is not going to let him off the hook. He's going to try and keep him on the ropes, off, off on the right-hand side of the course. Both boats still dragging away. It's actually uh, Bjorn that managed to set his shoot, roll around the front of Peter, just managed to get far enough ahead that he could bear away enough to roll around the front, and he's now set his spinnaker. Peter is now back behind, but he's also a penalty down. There we actually see it is Bjorn Hansen that crosses through the line ahead of Peter Gilmore. Bjorn Hansen has scored that win, and after what was an epic battle down that run, I mean, that really was a fight of giants. Despite his win, Hansen failed to progress to the next round. We knew going out uh, today that we had to win all three matches, and we started with two really, really good matches with uh, Gilly and uh, Phil Robertson. So uh, we came into this third match knowing that we definitely had a chance. So um, it's very, very frustrating now to, to realize that if we had won it, we would have been through. We rejoin the qualifying round on day three of the action. After losing to Bjorn Hansen, Peter Gilmore of Yanmar Racing was now struggling. A win against new tour card holder Keith Swinton in the All Australian matchup was looking like his last chance to secure qualification. And only 10 seconds to go here. Both boats early. I think we're going to see Keith try and turn up and take that windward boat from Peter. but. Peter's time distance, you can see Sofuku on the bow, they're calling Peter up, both boats are away, I mean a very even start between these two, absolutely neck and neck. This is going to be a real tactical battle down here, I could see some, some, some real, some real whiz-bang coming from this match, and I think actually Keith, despite being perhaps one of the smallest helmsmen, is also matching Peter for his energy and focus, and you know, that cool exterior I think can be ruffled, and I think He's actually, of these young kids, perhaps one of the more aggressive sailors. And it'll be interesting to see, like, as we roll yeah. down the course, back, exactly son. how Keith chooses to defend this Squaring run. Because he's got, he knows he's got four tall winning 
Peter Gilmore, uh, Yanmar Racing, America's Cup winner, bearing down on him. So here comes Keith, he's jibing. Peter's inside. Peter on port hey, jibe, give way boat at this point. So there, as they approach the mark, Peter demands room, room at the mark. Keith says no. Peter goes outside. I think we're going to see some flags. Now, the umpires will have had a good view of that. There's certainly been no penalty awarded at this point. So I think all we can do is wait, track up the beat. We may well have been a green flag. Peter tracking off now to that right-hand side of the course. Keith puts in a lazy tack. For me, Peter's position was very strong down that run, and I think he'll be disappointed that he didn't manage to turn that into an opportunity to pass, or at Ball least ride, to properly it? attack. Gilmore could not find his way back into the race, and Swinton took the victory, taking it right to the wire. Gilmore won his final race against Team Kiwi match skipper Laurie Jewelry to seal qualification. Today it was absolutely out of our hands when we went into that final race. All we could do is, uh, is win it and we managed to uh, start a bit better than um, Laurie Jury win that one and it then went into a tie break where I think there was four teams in the tie break and because we had beaten two of the other teams more times than they had beaten the others, you make a little table up. We had two points, um, one of the other teams had two points and the other two drop out and they were the, uh, effectively the finalists, so uh, it was close. At the other end of the table, Phil Robertson of Waka Racing was left jostling for top qualifying spot with new tour card holder Pierre Antoine Morvan. A win would seal first place and a bye straight into the semi finals. And that is Keith Swinton, like who has won the pin made. end of the line. Uh, Phil Robertson is tracking on just above, above Keith. There we go, the nice view there. Now, for me, again, it's that right-hand boat that perhaps has had the better of those two starts. Keith Swinton is going to work yeah. hard to try and track up to the line of Phil Robertson. But I think Phil's got just enough separation that he may be able to, to hold. Tracking across, they must be pretty close to the ley line. There was probably two, three minutes of sailing on starboard. Yeah, great shot of the boats. Quite a lot of separation between them, perhaps more than the closer camera angles would suggest. Bye, mate. The crews are, are leaning out on that windward side of the boat, trying to maximise the writing moment. Phil absolutely zoned in on the telltale, just trying to pilot that boat to windward, tracking as close to the wind as is possible. Yeah. Keith Swinton matching him though, absolutely inch for inch in that windward berth. Yeah, stand by Phil. Yeah, easing a bit of... Phil looking to rumble. Two, now, Keith, one, is Keith going to try Phil. and tack and cross? Coming up here, coming up. Coming Keith up. goes for the chip. No, no, he's going for the big luck. No room in there. No room. You have no room in there. He's come from outside. He has no room in that gap. He has no room in that gap. He has no room. No room in that gap. No room. No room in that gap. Come on. No room in that gap. No room in that gap. And a blue flag. Come on, it was poor. Right that there. is poor. That is penalty Robertson. For me, I think Phil put himself at Come unnecessary on, risk. He was on port. And I think he's just incurred a penalty and he's going to pay the boy. price for that. Now, will Phil just bear away and sail or will he come and attack? Hang on, we have a, a second penalty. What's the doing? Yeah, it's forward. Was that a green? Yeah, that was a green flag, so still just one outstanding penalty to Phil. He's elected to hoist his spinnaker and sail away from the top mark. He does have a small edge coming away from this. There we go, we can see there's a red flag. Umpires have deemed that that was a change of control, which means that Phil Robertson has to do his penalty instantaneously. 
Oh, and now right, Phil in the, almost the disadvantage here where he's actually going to have to do a conventional penalty, whereas if he was actually behind, so here we go, he's coming up for the tack, the spinnaker will be coming down on his boat, he comes into the breeze, they'll be trying to stay as close to Keith after this as is possible, but this is going to hurt him, this is going to, for me, be potentially a race-defining moment. Now the breeze has dropped off, it's a, it's a solid 25 seconds for the penalty, but the other problem here is you see Phil Robertson coming down with these big, heavy boats, which we're racing here in Germany, the Bavaria Max 44. It takes quite a long time to build, so although Phil's now finished his penalty, you can see Keith there, he's still extending, he's still faster, he's still powering away down the track, and it's Phil Robertson that is now quite a long way behind after that. For a moment, coming up. That's, uh, that's Keith and Keith coming through the line. They're taking his win against Phil, his rival. He'll be pleased with that. Robertson's loss was more than gain as he held on to top qualifying spot and a bye straight to the semi-finals. I think we say better than the other day. We were a little bit faster and we begin to understand the boat. But uh, tomorrow it will be a, a new competition for everybody and uh, we, we still focus. So at the end of the round robin stage, more than top the table with Phil Robertson and Swiss skipper Eric Monin just behind. New tour card holders Laurie Jury and Keith Swinton also qualified. Peter Gilmore and Joachim Aschenbrenner qualified through a countback after finishing in a four-way tie with Carol Jablonski and Staffan Lindbergh. Veteran skipper Bjorn Hansen and new Italian tour card holder Simona Ferraresi went out, along with local skipper Jan Eike Andersen. We rejoin the event at the quarter-final stage in which Kiwi Phil Robertson faces the young Dane Joachim Aschenbrenner. New tour card holder Laurie Jury is up against Eric Monin from Switzerland and veteran Peter Gilmore races fellow Australian Keith Swinton. The winners join French tour card holder Pierre-Antoine Morvan in the semi-finals, already through on a bye. Laurie Jury of Kiwi Match cruised through to the next round, winning 3-0 against Swiss hopeful Eric Monin. In the second quarter-final, an all-Australian tie between Peter Gilmore of Yanmar Racing and new tour card holder Keith Swinton. We join the action in the first race. One minute 40 to go. This is where the key decisions are made. They've got to decide what they want to win, when they want to lead back. Guys, I need you ready with me here. Keith hasn't got a jive there. We can see from here the bow of Peter Gilmore preventing Keith Swinton from turning to that right hand side. There we go. Wide flag from Peter Gilmore. Trim me up, trim me up. That was a green from the umpires. We will see an umpire's decision, but I think Keith could have to avoid Keith Gilmore in that situation. 
with 50 seconds on the clock. It's a boot call on the bow, calling it's clear to swing. You can get your bow above. Both boats throwing an attack. Keith early for this start here, and Peter doing everything he can to drive him in with 25 seconds on the clock. And they're early for that end. You can see Keith is going to struggle to waste his time here, and I think Peter knows that. He can smell a chance of getting back in here, and Keith forced to throw that tack in, and I can see Peter coming crashing in. Right legs are blazing. He feels. Keith Swinton tacks too early there. Over, over the line. Yeah. Uh -huh. I suspect we're going to see an umpire decision on that call. Perhaps nervous looks from Keith's crew back towards the umpire as they exit the starting box. We have a, a red flag penalty on yellow. So that is a penalty for Keith Swinton in that start. He did infringe Peter Gilmore. And he has to circle back. Do that red flag, remember, means he has to do the penalty straight away. And yet another mistake from, you know, Keith Swinton and his team. I think they failed to execute that uh, penalty correctly. And now all of a sudden, he's had to do a second penalty. And we can see, you know, disarray on Keith Swinton's boat now. Swinton and his crew were unable to regroup. And Gilmore went on to win the match easily. So Yanmar Racing putting the bow down to come across the line. Safuku goes to get the pole in. I can Canada, see Yaji ready, up boys. on the bow as well. They're going to take this down. This may mark a turning point for these guys in this regatta. The, the luck hasn't fallen from so far. They've complained about boats and they haven't had results and they've made mistakes. But here they are now, 1-0 up in the quarterfinals and nothing will, it won't have escaped Peter Gilmore. You always know that once you finish that round robin round and you go into the quarterfinals, all bets are off. And these guys are now one match up, their confidence in high and they're performing well. They'll be pleased with this and they'll be looking to move forward, win this quarterfinal, move on in this competition, make no mistake. Having found his form, Gilmore went on to win 3-1 and secure a semi-final spot. In the third quarter-final, Ashenbrenner took a 2-1 lead, leaving him on match point and Robertson needing a win to stay in the competition. We join them in match four. Now, Phil and his team, having managed to extend out what is a, a strong lead over Jochen Aschenbrenner in the top third of that beat. And with that penalty, they'll be feeling strong in this race, looking to try and square the score at 2-2 if they hold on to this lead in this fourth match. The leading skippers out of the qualifying round get to pick their opponent, and Phil Robertson obviously assumed that this might be an easy match for him to win. Uh, the young and inexperienced Jakim Brenner has, has actually come into this quarterfinal round and, and actually really given Phil Robertson a run for his money. And now, as the wind slightly softens, has Phil Robertson got the maturity and the nous to pick his way down this run to hold on to this lead against Jochen Aschenbrenner? These guys, I think, really having put some time and energy into the World Match Racing Tour this year, they'll be really looking to, I think, put in a performance, try and get onto that podium for the first time. So it's Phil Robertson here, the New Zealand team, coming from 2-1 down into this match against Jochen Eschenbrenner. He comes up to the line, there's the blue flag, there's the win for Phil Robertson, drawing this, this match at 2-2. Robertson's win took their quarter-final to sudden death. For the Kiwi tour card holder, it was do or die. A win for either skipper would see them through to the semi-finals. And it all comes down to this, a must-win match. Whoever wins this match will progress. 17 seconds to go, Phil Robertson coming back towards the start. How far back? You can see both Bamman calling time, calling distance. The turn up now in the final seconds from Phil Robertson to the right here, Jochen Aschenbrenner to the left. It's a very even start, perhaps a small edge to Phil Robertson in that right hand controlling position. Here comes Phil Robertson, you hear him counting down. 
think he's going to roll up for attack here. Now, who is going to be ahead at this point? This is going to be a key point. So Phil Robertson putting his bow down here. This could be an exciting moment in this match. Here comes Phil Robertson. He's bow down. And he's building straight at the midships of Aschenbrenner. Jochen Aschenbrenner forced to tack away. Phil Robertson's going to trim back onto the breeze. Now, what is going to define this match is will Phil Robertson be able to hold on to that win with Burke? He's faster now. It's Phil Robertson. It's all Phil Robertson at this point. He's slowly moving across Jochen Aschenbrenner. He's still faster. He's still moving forward. There goes Phil Robertson. He's managed to make it across to that ley line, to the top mark. Both boats simultaneous attacking. And it has been the experience of the New Zealanders that has managed to triumph against the youth of Jochen Aschenbrenner as they come in towards this top mark. There's a great snake, positioning from snake, Phil Robertson. Snake, great control snake. of the One, beat. Hoist. And as the spinnakers go up on this top mark, it is Phil Robertson with a very small lead over Jochen Aschenbrenner. And now the tables have turned. Now Phil Robertson from his attacking and controlling position on the beat is now the defending boat. So here comes Phil Robertson. This is gonna be the play he's gonna jibe. He's gonna try and yock Aschenbrenner here. The bowman is gonna try and get his pole on as quickly as possible to try and have the pole on for that luff. Jan Nilgaard on the Danish boat electing to go human pole as they come out of this jibe. Okay, Phil Robertson without answers here. It is Jochen Aschenbrenner that is rolling over the top of Phil Robertson. He is keep clear boat. Phil Robertson aggressively luffs. Come on, keep going up. Keep going up here. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Yeah. Hey, if you ever feel affected, let me know, okay? We jibe. Keep it on, Adam. How close? Yeah. So now we've probably got a dive and a... Jochen yeah. has done a great job yeah. of rolling Phil Robertson, but okay, Phil Robertson has used yeah. that positioning, age and experience. He's done a really nice job of, of resetting his spinnaker. We can see Coming Phil is forcing now. the young Danish team past the ley line. Stand by. Can we drop, jump out, let's go, drop, gas, drop. So here we go, drop. it's gonna be a boat drop, handling race drop, here. Both diving. boats are gonna have to drop their spinnakers and unfurl the jibs at identical times. Oh, main, and the boat oh, main, racing oh, race has oh, started. Oh, there go the jibs, go, down on. to come the spinnakers. Still and Phil Robertson. Can Jochen Ash and Brenner get an overlap as they come into this mark? There must be feet between the hulls as we look yeah. back there. Coming down now, coming down now a little. Let's transfer the main if we can. We can see a Y flag from Jochen Aschenbrenner. For me, go, Phil go, Robertson go. has done enough there. Green flag from the umpires confirming that. Nice job, and Phil Robertson has managed to defend his lead as they come down this yeah, run. Jochen Aschenbrenner had some great sailing, but the Kiwi had an answer for everything he threw at him, and it's Phil Robertson that leads into this bottom mark. It's been Phil Robertson the whole way so far. We've seen some excellent sailing from this young New Zealand team. He's taken in chances. When he's had opportunities to attack, he's taken them. And when he's had opportunities to push Jochen Aschenbrenner further back, further behind him on this race course, he's done that too. And that is the experience of this New Zealand team. We've seen some strong performances from them so far, this regatta, and this is certainly another one of those. A great performance from Jochen Aschenbrenner, nearly held Phil Robertson, but at 2-2, it was Phil Robertson that came back. And we see the yellow flag of Phil as he comes through the line. I think full credit to him, he sailed really well and you, I guess you kind of get that here in Germany. I think we did it last year, kind of unexpected to win and won through into the semi-finals. So yeah, it's a good place for young guys I guess. Um, but yeah, we're obviously happy with that and happy to be in the semi-finals. So with the remaining tour card holders progressing, the competition is hotting up here in Langenagen.
We rejoin the action at the semi-final stage, where French tour card holder Pierre-Antoine Morvan will face Laurie Jury of New Zealand, and fellow Kiwi Phil Robertson will come up against Peter Gilmore of Yanmar Racing. Having received a bye, more than stormed into a 2-0 lead over Jewelry. We join the action in the pre-start of the third race with more than on match point. Laurie Jewelry has the right of way, but Pierre Morthan will be able to have that lured position in this light conditions. That's often the better place to be as Pierre Morthan tacks in front of Laurie Jewelry. Laurie Jewelry coming up, there's only two seconds to go. Laurie Jewelry should have better speed there with Pierre Morthan tacking almost straight away at the gun. Laurie Jewelry with that controlling position. He had the better position at 40 seconds to go. He executed better. Pierre Morthan perhaps a little ambitious with the tack back in these light conditions. So here comes Laurie Jewelry around. He's still ahead of Pierre Morthan and with that shift, it will make it all the harder for Pierre Morvan to come back into this match. So it is Laurie Jury opening up the clock on Pierre Morvan as they round this final mark in this match. Here goes Laurie with his hoist. Pierre Morvan now only two, three lengths behind. Pierre Morvan has closed up here. The smooth sailing from the Frenchman has paid dividends. Now, can Pierre Morvan, as they approach the finish, manage to snatch something from nothing? Manufacture a win from nowhere as they approach the line. This is the final roll of the dice from the young Frenchman. I think the small edge there for Laurie Jury as he comes across. You can see him crossing across the front of Pierre Antoine Morvan. And there we go. It is Laurie Jury that takes this third match. Getting out of the blocks with his first win against Pierre Morvan. Pierre Morvan there looking to close it out and failing to do so. So it is 2-1 to the Frenchman. It's only 1.20 to go now as Laurie Jury quite a long way from the line. Pierre Morvan looking to tack back. We saw these two late tacks being costly for Pierre in the previous start. Now has he learned his lesson? He does the one tack, he does the other. Now, has he managed to place his boat well enough that Laurie Jory cannot capitalize? Laurie Jory will be quicker as they come into this exchange. There's the one minute gun, and it's Laurie Jory now that goes into that high mode. He's rolling up over the top of Pierre Morvan. Laurie Jory with the speed, but has he got his time and distance right? 40 seconds to burn. Now is Laurie, if Laurie is on time for the start, he's done a cracking job of defeating Pierre Morvan. The question is, is Laurie Jury early? Pierre Morvan now, having done his two tacks, having perhaps made the same mistake that he did before, let's just see how it plays out. Fourteen seconds to go, Pierre Morvan goes for attack. So there we go, the start gun opens and Laurie Jury again capitalizing on another mistake from Pierre Morvan. He's leading this race as they track across back to the right hand side, both boats tacking at start time. Laurie Jury is going to close this match out, an emphatic comeback for these guys. After a second costly mistake in the pre-start, Morvan allowed Jury to draw things level at 2-2. With both skippers now needing to win to progress, it was Jury who held his nerve and claimed the first spot in the final. We lost too much to start, and uh, so we don't say our best level, I think, at the end. We learned a lot on this type of boat because before coming, we, do, we didn't know so heavy boat and wheel. So I think we really progressed for that, and I hope we'll be good in Korea next week. In the second semi-final, it was young Kiwi Phil Robertson who stormed into a 2-0 lead. But back-to-back -back wins from tour veteran Peter Gilmore drew it level. We join the racing in the deciding match. 28 seconds to go on the clock. Now who's judged the time and distance right? It's Peter Gilmore coming up to, to the committee boat. Peter Gilmore looks early to me. He's having to turn down the line. Phil Robertson has forced. Peter Gilmore in early, but he still has the lead. Six seconds to go here. 
Phil Robertson punching out on the line. Now, who's judged this right? There's the gun. Phil Robertson a little closer to the line. No flags, so an excellent start from Phil Robertson from the Young Kiwi team. They managed to start separated and to windward of Yanmar Racing. So Phil Robertson just managing to hold on to that groove. We can see Peter Gilmore and Yanmar Racing really trying to put the squeeze on. They know they're getting near to that lay line. Phil deciding he's either on that lay or He's perhaps beginning to get affected, so we see Phil Robertson tack and that deep angle of Peter Gilmore as they exit that corner of the race course would suggest to me they're actually on the lay line. Absolutely neck and neck. Perhaps the closest, closest top mark rounding we've seen so far in, a, in this uh, Pari World Match Racing Tour. Event one, Match Race Germany. This for a shot in the final. Here comes Phil Robertson, and I think we may actually see a luff from him. He's getting nervous about the presence of Peter Gilmore, and he comes up for a luff here. We're going to see some fireworks at the top of the course. That's the luff. Peter Gilmore responding, and very close. I think Peter Gilmore perhaps getting a little bit too close. Forced to tack away. And there goes Phil Robertson. A mistake from Peter Gilmore. He goes for the tack. It's going to be a windward hoist for Peter Gilmore. He spins all the way round. He goes for the jive back. Peter Gilmore now securing that inside shot. A great position for attack, but Peter Gilmore in this light wind, he's going to be slow. He has done attack and he's done a jive. They're fighting the crew work. You see Safuku on the bow. He's being the human pole and the furler. They shoot sets and they've got a great position. But do they have the boat speed? Here comes Phil Robertson. He's jiving across. He's coming to attack Peter Gilmore. Jiving onto starboard. Peter Gilmore is the giveaway boat. I can see Phil Robertson. He's coming up onto a hot angle looking to attack Peter Gilmore. Peter looking for the jive. Peter Gilmore has the placement, but Phil Robertson has the speed out of this top mark. Am I over there? And here comes Phil Robertson. Has Peter Gilmore managed to snatch a lead back in a very unconventional mood at the top of this course? Nice for sure, that down, Pete. Sailing his BMG angle, Peter looking to close his air, and it's, it's Phil Robertson that's sliding into another attacking jive. Now, will Peter Gilmore continue, or will he jive and match? Make the decision anyway, they're going to continue, they have no choice. I think perhaps a, a moment of indecision between the, 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 the communication on the boat there. I'm not sure they were sure what they really wanted. Let's go pole away in the zone here for sure. Yep. Bill Robertson saying pole away. He's certain that he is in the zone. He thinks he has rights coming in here. So that moment of indecision on Peter Gilmore's boat, perhaps opening up the inside of the line for Phil Robertson and his team. A definite mistake by Peter Gilmore and Fred, the tactician on board that boat, opening up this inward, inward angle for Phil Robertson. He slides around the boat. He slides around the mark and, and, and the panic and confusion. Yanmar Racing, they still have their spinnaker set as Peter Gilmore turns up. The spinnaker is up and their jib is not out as they turn up and Phil Robertson has the advantage. Oh, amazing crew work there from Yaji and Fuku on the front, wrestling that spinnaker down in, in mere seconds. But it is Phil Robertson that has snatched that lead back on this first run of this beat. Phil now with a seven, eight boat length lead over Yanmar Racing. He's positioned between the finish and the Japanese engine-sponsored powerhouse of match racing, Peter Gilmore, Yanmar Racing. Jive here, guys. But it's Phil that's know. had the better of the day here, and with a comprehensive lead, he does his final jive in towards the finish. We've seen one young New Zealander secure a position in the final here of Match Race Germany. I think we're about to see another as Phil Robertson jibes in towards the finish. His cool, calm, expansive style really showcased here in this semi-final against Peter Gilmore. And despite Peter's valiant efforts to come back, coming back from 2-0 down to level the series and then to overtake on what was the penultimate run, it is Phil Robertson and his team that come through, take the yellow flag, take the nod and secure the second final against his countryman, Laurie Jury. 
Tremendous sailing from both these teams in this match, but it's Phil Robertson that has the best of it. And we see there a laugh from Phil. I don't think he can believe it. Phil got a, a good roll on us early, early on, uh, and uh, he, you know, he should have really beaten us 3-0. Uh, we're leading in that final race, and uh, we uh, should have been able to put him away from there. And a bit unlike us, we uh, gave it back to him down the run coming into the bottom mark. And uh, yeah, he just raced away with it from there. So well done to them. They uh, they saw very well. I definitely didn't make it easy on ourselves. I think uh, should have won the third one. Should have put that one away a long time ago. Probably this afternoon. Uh, but yeah, no, obviously happy to get that one. It was a definitely a dog fight that last one. So yeah, tough match, and he's obviously a very tough opponent. And I think it's probably the first time we've beaten him. So we're happy with that. So with that win over Gilmore, Robertson would face new tour card holder Laurie Jory in an all-Kiwi final at the first event on the Alpari World Match Racing Tour 2012. Day five of Match Race Germany and conditions are not looking good for racing. The wind has dropped off and the skippers are waiting to see if they'll be racing at all. We've already done what we, what we came here to do. You know, we've made it through to the finals and we're pretty happy with that and um, we'd love to have a crack at, at taking it out. We're just uh, standing around and waiting for Breeze now. Uh, we've yeah, just got a few more hours to wait before we start racing and then Hopefully there'll be something out there, but it's not looking too promising. If we don't end up racing today, um, Phil ends up winning the regatta because uh, he he won the us overall in the round robin. He ended up uh, two points in front of us, so we go back to the count back for that. It's definitely a lot a lot more satisfying when you win on the water and win the races and win the event properly. So uh, that's that's definitely the buzz you go for, and that's what we're here to do is win it on the water and not by not sailing. So. Yeah, it's definitely a shame if that happens and we're probably really looking forward to racing instead of sitting around and waiting. With plenty going on at the race venue, but very little happening on the water, the race officials eventually conceded that conditions were not right for racing and the skippers came back to shore. As a result, Walker Racing's Phil Robertson claimed victory at Match Race Germany, the count back favouring him over fellow Kiwi Laurie Jory. It's past our expectations. This is our first event on the tour, our first time tour card holders, and to come second is great for us, and um, we really want to build on it. It's our first tour event we've ever won, so we're over, over the moon, really, and yeah, we're very happy to have won it and learned a lot this week. So here's the final scoreboard for Match Race Germany. And after the first event, the Alpari World Match Racing Tour leaderboard looks like this. Despite winning Match Race Germany, Phil Robertson gains no tour points as this was not one of his chosen events. However, new tour card holders Laurie Jory and Pierre-Antoine Morvan get some valuable early points, as does Peter Gilmore. The tour card holders who did not compete at Match Race Germany will have to wait until the Career Match Cup to make their mark on the Alpari World Match Racing Tour. Bjorn Hansen is the new king of the Korea Match Cup.